afternoon session. Our next speaker is Carl Schwede, who will be telling us about um, birational geometry and mixed characters. Okay. I, we're still actually going to stay over the um, stay over the complex numbers or characteristic p at least for two thirds of the talk. So, <clears throat> what I want to do today is I do sort of want to motivate some different ways to sort of unify our thinking, where we had this f rational, which was defined by like this Frobenius push forward of the structure sheaf, and it had all these, you know, weird, you know. Yeah, and we had this Frobenius push forward to the structure sheaf. We were comparing this to a resolution. We sort of used them in the same way to cook up vanishing theorems from my first talk at some level. But on the other hand, they look quite different. And today, I'm, really my goal is to, to sort of give you an idea about why these different approaches are basically the same. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to do it by trying to give you an idea of at least a couple different ways of you know, bridging these two gaps. And obviously one bridge between characteristic zero and characteristic P is the integers, i.e. mixed characteristic. And so that's what we're going to try to get to. Okay, so I have a motivating theorem first. It's due to l -Keek. Um And let's say we have AM... Um, it's a stock of a variety in characteristic zero. So very common in commutative algebra languages when I write a comma m, that means a local ring. This is the unique maximal ideal. And so that's all I'm doing here. I'm going to choose f in a. I definitely want it to not a zero divisor. I don't really quite need variety, actually, but let's say this. And let's say, um, <clears throat> and suppose A mod F has rational singularities, then so does A. And so let me just draw this geometrically as well. All I'm saying is I have a happy little variety. There's a point on it. I want some color. And F is like defining some Cartier divisor maybe through that point. So, uh, you know, the point is the point we're localizing at. Maybe it's not closed. I don't know. I mean, and what I'm saying is, if this Cartier divisor through that point, right, has rational singularities, then my whole variety has rational singularities, at least in a neighborhood of that point. I mean, this is, this is all I'm saying. Okay, so <clears throat> I'd like to give a proof of this because it goes back to some of the vanishing theorems we've seen from the previous lectures, and it's also going to motivate how we're going to think about things um, and mix characteristic a little bit. Okay. Oh, and maybe I should remind you, again, um, remember A has rational singularities if two, two properties hold A is Cohen-Macaulay, and then the more sort of key property that we've been working with is if pi from y to x, x is in this case spec A, is a resolution of singularities, then pi lower star omega y is omega x, or omega A, as you might like to think about it. So this is a definition of rational singularities, at least the one we're using for, for now. Okay? We're, we're definitely in characteristic zero sort of still. Okay. So I'd, I'd like to give a proof of this, of this theorem really quick. But before I can give that proof, I want to, I want to rephrase 
this condition right here. Okay. And the way I'm going to rephrase it is going to be just a little bit funny. And it's really not going to be a very algebraic geometer thing to do. Um, <clears throat> it turns out that there's this thing called matless duality or local duality, which turns Noetherian modules into Artinian modules and Artinian modules into Noetherian modules and there's an equivalence of categories, you know, invented by Grodendieck, or, or, or well, Matlas, but Grodendieck did the local duality version. And what actually it says is that in this case, omega A or omega X, depending on how you think of it, this guy dualizes Matlas dual or local dual. Um, to, all right, top local cohomology of A. So what do I mean by local cohomology? This is the derived functor of gamma sub m. So if you see in Hartshorn, this is like the cohomology with supports at that point. Okay. I'm sorry, you guys can't see. <laughs> Okay, so it's derived functor of this, so I'm just taking the dth derived functor, um, HDMA. So it's just local cohomology there. And in fact, also we have that our other, our other term, pi lower star omega y, this guy dualizes, again, Matlas dualizes, to HDM of r pi lower star o y. And this is just an exercise in Grodendieck duality, local duality, um, in Hartshorn's book on Grodendieck duality. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> in particular, because, it, because Matlas duality is an equivalence of categories, this isomorphism can just be phrased as an isomorphism between these guys. And the map we want to be an isomorphism is the obvious map. So I can rewrite this condition 1, call it 1 prime, as the canonical map HDMA to, oh, D, I'm sorry, D equals dimension of A. Um, the lower local cohomologies correspond to cohomologies of the dualizing complex other cohomologies. It just goes to HDMA to HDM, R pi lower star, O y. There's a canonical map from A to R pi lower star, O y, you know, the derived category. All I'm doing is whacking it with top local cohomology. So this map is an isomorphism. And because this map right here, the dual map is always injective. These are torsion-free sheaves on varieties. All I really need to do is check this one is, um, if this one's injective, I needed to check. Oh yeah, this one's always injective, so that means this one's always surjective, and so I need to check this one is injective. Injective is enough. Okay. All right, so now we've gotten our setup out of the way. What's the trick? The trick is not very complicated, fortunately. Um, and I, I don't need to do this. This dualization is completely unnecessary for the proof I'm about to do. However, it is useful later. So I'm writing it this way. But it is absolutely and completely unnecessary to do this duality here. I'm just doing it to get you used to some language. Okay, um, I could have done it all with the omegas. Would have been totally fine. All, the only difference would have been the arrows went the other way. Okay, um, so all I'm going to do is if I want to relate the singularity, if I want to relate A mod F and A, I'm just going to write down um, well, there's a couple different ways to do it. I would normally write down this sequence right here. Remember A is Cohen Macaulay, so canonical module. Omega A is a canonical module. And <clears throat> this is just times F. And you can interpret this either way. They're both correct. This is omega of a mod f or omega a mod f. <laughs> you know, same thing. But now I'm going to write it the other way. 
Because when I mod up by f, the dimension drops by 1. I'm going to have an h d minus 1. H. What? Thank you. I have this sequence here, just the dual sequence. All right. And so really, I want to use somehow the fact that this guy has rational singularities and that one prime. And I want to use it to conclude this guy has rational singularities. And this is still just multiplication by f. OK. I tried to learn my lesson again. So I wrote the relevant diagram down already instead of trying to write it over. Um, <clears throat> all right. Now, there's one key part we haven't written down yet. So this, this line right here is just that line. I just copied it over very, very quickly. It was a magic trick. You couldn't see me do it. Um, and there's really zeros here if, if you want, although that doesn't matter. But there is another key point that's sort of hidden. There's actually a zero right here, too. And so I want to point this out. Remember. We had grauer riemann schneider vanishing, if you remember all the way back, which tells us that the higher direct images of omega y were still in characteristic zero, remember? These equal zero for all i bigger than zero. And that tells us, again, the dual formulation is that the local cohomology of r pi lower star, o y, that this equals zero for all i less than d. So when I write down the same sequence over here, I'm going to have an hd minus 1 of r pi lower star oy. It's going to sit right here. And now that's just grau riemann schneider and So that's 0 right there. OK. And I claim this diagram is enough to prove l theorem. And so I'm going to run through that argument. This diagram is literally just, OK, I have a map from a to r pi lower star, a to r pi lower star. You know, here I go oy mod f. That's going to be some probably non-reduced divisor on y. It's y is a resolution of singularities. It's going to be OK, though. OK, so what I want to do then is I want to just use this diagram to deduce Elkeek's theorem. All right. So there's one other observation I need to make. As I said, oh, y mod f, this is like the pullback of the divisor of f onto y. It has more than one component, most likely. And some of them may, may be non-reduced. But one of those components is birational to A mod F, right? Because, you know, OK. One of those components was birational to A mod F. And in particular, it's not very hard to see that if I did a further resolution, or maybe a mod out by that one component, and then do a further, further resolution, I can actually take a resolution. Maybe I'll call it R rho lower star OZ. This is now a resol oh, maybe z to a mod f is a resolution. I could do a further map right there. And if I do that, a further map, then, OK, let's think through what that means. Um, that means this map right here, well, that's going to be injective. That's an isomorphism. And so certainly this map is injective. And now this map is injective. And we're actually starting to look a little bit like the diagrams we've seen before. OK, so let me run through the rest of the proof now. This is an Artinian module. I'm trying to prove that this map right here is injective because that's dual to the surjectivity I wanted there. So if I want to prove this map is injective, I'm going to take an element here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and now I'm just going to chase it through a diagram. But there's one quick observation I can make first. This is an Artinian module. It's everything in here is killed by a power of the maximal ideal. So in particular, if I have an element that goes to 0, I can replace it by you know, maybe multiples until that element itself is killed by f. I can replace it by f times z and f squared times z until, in particular, its image here gets sent, um, gets sent to 0 and its image here gets sent to 0. Right? I mean, if I have an element that goes to 0, a non-zero element that goes to 0, I can find a non-zero element that goes to 0 that also goes to 0 that way, because I can replace it by f times it. And so now I take that element. If it goes to 0, I chase it back here. 
all at Y. Oh, but now I'm injective all the way across. And so it has to go to something non-zero here. And that's the entire proof. Okay. So <clears throat> it wasn't very hard in characteristic zero. And really, the only thing we used was the fact, really, was this injectivity right here. I mean, maybe we used something about I could do like a further resolution. I, there was some kind of functoriality. I could do something that was kind of like a... I did a blow up a resolution of my A. I could also sort of compare it to a resolution of A mod F at the same time. Maybe that was also in there. But the real content was this Grau Riemann Schneider vanishing right there. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, I mean, I, it has to be in the maximal ideal. I, 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 I don't want to, but I, I don't want this to be like the empty scheme or something like that. Sorry, sorry, I should have said that, yeah. Um, okay, I can say F is an M. Yeah, I don't want to mod out by a unit. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, I have this picture, right? I, I, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're right. I, I don't want to model, you're absolutely right. I don't want to model by a unit, so I should say F is an M. Okay. So, <clears throat> what if we wanted to do this in characteristic P, or mixed characteristic? But let's say we start wanting to do this in characteristic P. The first thing you'll notice is that Grau Riemann Schneider doesn't hold. I think Christopher and, I, mean, so I think lots of people have known this, but Christopher and Shondor have written this down. Um, pretty carefully. So <clears throat> this argument, at least on its face, is not going to work because we don't know the zero here, at least as far as I know. And there's actually, um, however, this argument does sort of work for F rational, at least if you change your F rational definition a teeny bit. And so I'm going to give you guys one more definition of F rational. And at least I'll tell you why it works. Okay. So now A M is a local ring characteristic P. Don't need this, but I'm going to assume that Frobenius is finite. I really don't need it here. But I'm going to assume it. Um, <clears throat> And let's, and then A has F rational singularities. This is not the definition I gave last time. There's two parts. A is still going to be Cohen Macaulay. And then here's the other one in HDMA. To HDMA plus A plus is not a notation I've introduced yet, so I'll explain that in just a second. This map injects. Okay. So, <clears throat> what is A plus? I think that's probably the first reasonable question. I'm going to flip these two. I don't think I need that anymore. I have an even more interesting diagram elsewhere. So A plus here is the integral closure of A in the algebraic closure. of the fraction field of A. So take the algebraic closure of the fraction field, take the integral closure of A inside there, you're going to get a highly, highly non Noetherian ring. But somehow it turns out that in characteristic P, you can check F rationality there. Not that you'd ever want to, 
<laughs> but you can certainly check it in there. All right, um, by the way, this is not something you can do in characteristic zero because this HTMAA plus is like the limit of all the um, finite covers of A, basically, finite extensions of A, or, you know. And so what's going to happen when we take, um, <clears throat> when we, well, in characteristic zero, A to any finite extension splits. The trace map is going to do the job. And so in characteristic zero, we're going to, this map's always going to be injective because it's the limit of a bunch of split maps. So it's, it's not going to mean anything in characteristic zero. It's just going to like imply normality. But in characteristic P, um, it turns out because we have so much more ramification lying around, we actually, it actually does mean something. And you could even do separable closure in, instead. Um, let's say, otherwise total ring of fractions is fine too. Let's assume that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I do want to say not no theory. However, HIM A plus equals zero for all I less than dim A, dim A, which is D, i.e. A plus is Cohen-Macaulay. I mean, it also, it's also Cohen-Macaulay in stronger senses too, like in terms of regular sequences and everything. But it actually follows that this guy is Cohen-Macaulay. This is a theorem of Hoxter and Hunicke. Remember, we're still in characteristic P. So in characteristic P, this thing is Cohen-Macaulay. And remember, we actually used something like this just a couple minutes ago, right here. We were using the fact that the resolution of singularities, Grout Riemann Schneider tells us that the derived push forward of the structure sheaf from a resolution of singularities is actually sort of Cohen Macaulay, too. And in fact, if you use this, this definition of f rational singularities, which I also probably should attribute to Karen Smith, um, <clears throat> then then you can actually run through that argument over there. You have to, instead of, you know, you still have to do a factorization like this, but it's not hard. It's the same, same game. There's another way you can run this too. Instead of taking A plus, you can take the perfection of A. If you take the perfection of A, then the perfection is not Cohen-Macaulay, but it's almost Cohen-Macaulay in some sense in that these HI, uh, HIM of A perfected are almost zero. And so you can multiply by an element that makes them zero, which is what tight closure does. If you've heard of tight closure introduced by Hoxter and Hunicke, that's exactly what that does. And so then you can, if you replace sort of zeros by almost zero, you can still run through this argument right here. I, I mean almost in the precise, precisely in some kind of sense of Gabor Romero or something. Okay. So you might ask, well, what about, you know, well, what about mixed characteristic? Maybe we can use A plus and mixed characteristic. And I think we still don't know, quite know if we can use A plus and mixed characteristic. Where's Vargoff? Over there. <laughs> what? You have nothing to say? All right. Even if I periodically complete or something. OK. Um, so. I'm going to state a theorem of Andre now. And this might actually suggest some common ground. And this is a very recent theorem of Andre. It says that, let's say, A M is a complete ring. in mixed characteristic, complete local ring in mixed characteristic. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to, you know, you don't need the mixed characteristic, but, but then the theorem is not due to Andre, it would be due to Huxter and Hunicke, essentially. Um, then there exists 
and what's called a big Cohen Macaulay, a and actually you can say a plus algebra. B, and in fact, you can make it perfectoid too. It's not going to be important in my talk so much, except that it's like hidden everywhere. But you can make a, a, you, you can make a big Cohen Macaulay perfectoid A plus algebra B, um, you know, over A. Okay? Which is sort of like this A plus. What does big Cohen Macaulay big mean? Big Cohen Macaulay means not necessarily no theory. <laughs> That's all it means. So over here in characteristic P, A plus is going to be a big Cohen Macaulay algebra. Okay? Um, and you could even think of R pi lower star OY as sort of like a big Cohen Macaulay algebra, except it's not big and it's not an algebra. It lives in the derived category. But for this talk, that's probably okay. But for this conference, that's probably okay. Um, but so, so, so this guy's also sort of Cohen Macaulay in characteristic zero. That's what, Rez, that's what Grout Riemann Schneider says. And actually, that was observed by Paul Roberts, I think, in like 1978, that r pi lower star is like isomorphic to some ice, you know, Cohen Macaulay complex, r pi lower star OY. But what Andre did is he solved this, is he solved this thing right here, which gives you this really big, um, I mean, this, it solves a whole bunch of al uh, questions in commutative algebra, frankly, simultaneously. OK. And so that also suggests, well, maybe we could use these instead of resolutions or Frobenius or A plus in say mixed characteristic or maybe in any characteristic um, when we couldn't use them in characteristic where we don't have something in, character, in mixed characteristic where we used A plus or Frobenius in characteristic P or where we used the resolution in characteristic zero. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. But before I do that, I do wanna do a little bit more details about thinking about what rational singularities really means. Because I've only gave, given you one definition here, and it's really probably not the right definition. So I think it would be good to talk a little bit about different definitions of rational and sort of where everything sits. Okay. So, Let's say AM is a local ring, local Noetherian ring. Then, and I'm not making any characteristic assumptions right now. Maybe I want excellent. I'm not even sure I want that necessarily. But then AM is pseudo rational. if it has the properties, basically, that we've been asking for for rational singularities the whole time. If A is Cohen-Macaulay, and for all, well, we don't know resolutions exist, but for all pi from Y to X is spec A, for all proper birational maps or projective birational maps, We have HDM A, D is still the dimension, to HDM R pi lower star O Y injects. Okay. So this is called pseudo rational. Now, this definition in characteristic zero is the definition I've been using the whole time, except I said for a resolution and not for any proper birational map, but you can quickly see that it's enough. If you can check it for one resolution, that's all you need to check. You don't need to check any more proper birational maps, you're done. But this is not the classical definition of rational singularities. I've been sweeping that under the rug for all my talks. So I'm going to write down the classical definition of rational singularities, too. The classical definition of rational singularities AM is rational if for all, again, Y to 
x is spec A for all resolutions. <clears throat> Again, we have to, I think we do want rational singularities here. Then <clears throat> we have that OX to r pi lower star OY is an isomorphism. And the point is, these two notions are the same in characteristic zero quite easily and has been known for a very long time. I mean, the point is, OK, if we're saying A is Cohen Macaulay, then the dualizing complex for x just looks like omega x, maybe in some shifted in some degree, if, depending on how you normalized it. And on the other hand, r pi lower star, again, y is a resolution, so it's Cohen Macaulay. This is by Grau Riemann Schneider, myself a little more room here, this is pi lower star omega y dot, and the dot only shifts it. Grau Riemann Schneider says there's no higher direct images. And so all I'm doing is saying that the direct, the drive direct push forward of omega y equals omega x dot, and if you just Grodendieck dualize that, that just turns into this. And so in characteristic zero, by Grau Riemann Schneider, things are equivalent. In characteristic P, though, you can ask, is this pseudo-rational definition really the same as this? Let's say we had resolutions of singularities, like we're in dimension three. What do we do? Well, so Shandor Kovac recently actually proved that they are the same in the following sense. And I just want to point out how this links into this big Komagali picture again. And what this says is that <clears throat> um, if A is pseudo-rational, then for all pi y to x proper by rational, Macaulifications, Macaulification. So that's just, okay, we don't know resolution of singularities exists, but it turns out there's always some blow ups we can do that make it Cohen Macaulay. Don't know if we can make it Cohen Macaulay and normal. Maybe someone here does. But we can always make it Cohen Macaulay. If A is pseudo rational, then for all pi to x a proper by rational Macaulification, and I ran out of room, I'll just stick this is true. The map from OX to R pi lower star OY is an isomorphism. So in particular, if you happen to know something is pseudo-rational in that sense, maybe it's F-rational, we talked about last time, that F-rational satisfies those two properties, then it's, actually, then it's actually rational in the classical sense too by this result of Kovac. Now, you might think, okay, that's great. Well, that tells me that there exists this somehow Macaul Cohen Macaulay object. You know, maybe I don't need Andre's theorem or something. Macaulifications exist. But it turns out that it really doesn't because it turns out A itself was already Cohen Macaulay. And, what we're, and so somehow what we're really trying to accomplish with Andre's theorem over there is we're actually creating this thing that it can map to, this Cohen-Macaulay algebra, <clears throat> without assuming A is Cohen-Macaulay. Because Andre's theorem is very uninteresting, except for maybe the perfectoid bit, um, <clears throat> if we assume A is Cohen-Macaulay. Because can I map A to a Cohen-Macaulay A algebra? If A is Cohen-Macaulay, yes, I can map it to itself. Okay, So if I'm assuming that A is Cohen-Macaulay, then from the point of view of mapping it to a Cohen macaulay something, it's not so good to use Chandor's Sean, theorem here. But on the other hand, this is still, this still somehow really completes the picture that all the notions of rational singularities you might have seen before coincide. No, resolutions don't exist, macaulifications do. So it actually does give you quite a substantial um, leg up on some problems. Okay. And, all right, so even with this in mind, it still seems like 
you might make the following other definition. Okay, so we have a couple different versions of, well, we have one option for rational singularities here, but here's another one. So definition, AM, let's say complete local is maybe P for perfectoid, big comb Macaulay, BCM, rational. You know, if we can put KLT or something, I can do BCM. Um, uh, B BCM rational, big comb Macaulay rational, if A is Cohen Macaulay and HDMA injects into HDMB, D is still the dimension, for all maybe perfectoid. Big Cohen Macaulay algebras. B. If we're in mixed characteristic or characteristic P, I'll, I'll say perfectoid. Otherwise, I'll just say this. OK. So you might ask, OK, well, how does this compare to what we already have? How does this compare to our other notions of rational or pseudo rational or F rational? Oh, am I already out of time? I am. Did I? No, OK, I, I go to 30. OK. I was like, wow, I already blew it away. <laughs> Must have been going really slow today. OK, so <clears throat> theorem. <clears throat> oh, this is due to Ling Xuan Ma and myself. Um, in characteristic P, perfectoid or not, big coma Kali is equivalent to PPBCM rational. This is equivalent to F rational. And last time we talked about how F rational implied pseudo rational. And pseudo rational by, again, Kovacs' theorem implies classical rational. Okay? So in characteristic P, this is the same as um, F rational. But there are examples of pseudo rational things that are not F rational. If you take Duval singularities, like ordinary double point rational singularities, Gorenstein rational singularities for surfaces in characteristic 2, 3, 5. No, sorry, some of those, some of them are F, F rational, some are not. You know, you look at Arden's list and you can, by Fetter's criterion, a slight generalization of that criterion I wrote down last time, you can actually just check it. You can actually eyeball those. You don't need, even need to do anything. Um, <clears throat> In mixed characteristic, or characteristic zero, P BCM rational implies pseudo rational. And again, by Kovacs theorem, it implies classical rational. In, you might ask, well, OK, what about an equal characteristic zero, like varieties? If I know I'm big Macaulay rational, these big Macaulay algebras exist there, even by work of Hochstra and Hunicke, do I actually know I have rational singularities and characteristic zero? The answer is we don't know. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I guess for d two, dimension two, I think it's fine. Probably, but outside of that, I just don't know the answer. Um, in characteristic zero, I don't know whether ordinary rational implies big Cohen Macaulay rational in this sense. Um, 
By the way, the, you know. Okay. Maybe I should also just at least mention or assert without proof So I'll put this up. Um, <clears throat> that we also have a perfectoid VCM version. This is for the experts of F regular or KLT singularities, and even for pairs. And essentially, we do it by taking index one or by taking index one covers and doing computations there, and also for test slash multiplier ideals too. Okay. <laughs> but I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to stick in the rational singularities world because that's a little bit more concrete. But in case you're wondering, yes, we can do that too. Okay. Um, <clears throat> But even better, of oh, that theorem over there? Oh, um, no, I don't think I want to say. Oh, B? No, I really don't want to say what B is. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, hmm. Uh, okay, so. No, I have a complete ring inside there. There's sort of like a, like a vit vectors join some variables ring. I form some kind of perfectoid guy off of that. Um, and, I, and I set it in such a way that it sort of behaves well with respect to like the ramifications. So I can take lots of, so that ring lives inside A, right? And, and so that map to A is ramified at some point. So I'd somehow take this perfectoid guy is going to be rigged. What Andre did is so I could take roots of that ramification. And then you do some work to show it's sort of almost big cone Macaulay, and maybe you tense, and then you sort of essentially periodically complete tensor it up with this. And I, OK, I, uh, yeah, let, let, let's stop there. <laughs> OK. Um, I mean, yeah. It, it, really require, it really requires, for me to actually do a decent job of explaining that, I really need to talk about some of the perfectoid machinery. And I'm not willing to do that during this talk. OK, so, but I do want to point out another theorem. And I should hardly even call this a theorem, except I should at least put Ma and myself's name by it, maybe Ma's name. Um, this is just Elkeek's theorem again. If A mod F, same setup, is P BCM rational. So is A. The proof is right here, where you replace all these r pi lower stars with B. Okay. But that's really the entire proof. The big Cole Macaulay gives me the Grau Riemann Schneider vanishing that we used, and everything else is pretty much unchanged. Okay. And in particular, I want to point out a particular version of this, i.e., if A mod P, maybe A is mixed characteristic, right? If A mod P is F rational, then A is big Cole Macaulay rational. Again, just because F rational is exactly the same as, as B, P, B, C, M rational. And if you, I, I could tell you something about that proof, but maybe that's not quite so interesting. So, <clears throat> okay. And so that actually says something quite nice. And I think that's what I sort of want to end my talk with a little bit of discussion of. And again, we also have a version of this for 
F regular big coma Macaulay KLT as well. And so if you have a version of that, you're basically doing inversion of a junction for log terminal singularities going from characteristic P to mixed characteristic. That's the kind of statement we're actually getting. All right, I'm going to erase this proof now. And, and so I want to think, let's go back to this theorem I talked about last time, where I said if I had a singularity in characteristic zero, then it was rational if and only if, after I reduce it to characteristic p, at least for maybe for most p, for p big or something, if it was, after I reduce it to characteristic p for p big, if it was rational in character, F rational in characteristic P, that's the same as being rational in characteristic zero for, right? So F rational for P big, same as rational in characteristic zero. This is the theorem of Hara and Metastrinovas. It's one implication and Smith for the other implication. Um, and so I, but I, there is actually a subtlety in that. There is this P big hypothesis. It actually doesn't seem to follow from that theorem that if I have something in characteristic zero and I know after I reduce it to characteristic p for like a single p, like you know mod three or something or mod five, if I know I'm f rational for mod three or mod five, that didn't actually seem to imply, at least if you run through that proof, um, that you were, had rational singularities in characteristic zero. And essentially the reason is, okay, to check whether or not um, oh, I erased it. Basically, to check whether or not it's good enough, you have to compute this r pi, the p is big enough, you have to compute this r pi lower star omega y after you've spread it out to a mixed characteristic. So if you could compute that pi lower star omega y after you spread it out to mixed characteristic, then that'd be fine. But if you could compute pi lower star omega y, you didn't need to actually <laughs> reduce the characteristic p to check whether something's rational. But now let's think about what, what we have. So let's say I have, so here's sort of a thought experiment example. If I have maybe A, let's just, I'm going to keep it over Q, Q and maybe MQ. Let's say everything's defined over Q. Maybe it's a singularity in characteristic zero. I can spread this out. to maybe A sub Z, and this is going to be a finite type Z algebra. So if I tensor this guy up with Q, I'm going to get something that when I further localize, I'm going to get my singularity that I was interested in. Okay. And I guess tensoring up with Q is also a localization. This MQ, so if, I, if I'm thinking about this as a family, right? This MQ is going to be some prime ideal in this family. You know, maybe there's some like hyperbola-like things here, and I don't know how many components there are. There might be more than one. I don't know, but you know, it might be some funny picture like this. Okay. So down here is spec Z, and here I have my family over spec Z. All right. And this blue, this blue business is basically, um, is basically MQ. Well, I'll call it M sub Z or something. It's not maximal anymore or anything like it, right? But it something, looks something roughly like that maybe. And so, so we do get the following though. So via L. Keek's argument essentially, If, um, <clears throat> if a z mod p, maybe I'm going to localize further at, you know, m z, m z plus p. So in other words, if I look at like this fiber, here's p, maybe that's five. I look at that fiber right there, and if I notice that this thing, after localizing at that interesting point, if that guy's F rational, then these points, or, or, or then, then those points in mixed characteristic 
are, or even just one of them is all we're going to need, those points are um, rational in, um, or they're BCM rational in mixed characteristic. BCM rational implies pseudo rational. And so I can just tensor up with Q. And what I get from this, so if this guy is F rational, then A Q is rational in the usual sense. Because that's just a localization argument. So if you put this together, you actually get that if you have to worry about one thing, which I, I drew an asymptote there so you can see it. Um, but basically, if you have a singularity in characteristic zero and you can check that it's F rational when you do one mod P reduction, then you actually know it's rational in characteristic zero. The one thing you have to make sure is you know, you're not modding out a P that misses the singularity you want entirely. But as long as you don't do that, which is just a little bit of work to check it out, but it's not actually very much usually, as long as you don't do something like that, you're fine. OK. So that actually gives us a way to check whether, using a computer, a new way to check whether a singularity is rational or not. And so I'd like to sort of conclude with a computer advertisement. Oh. See if I can make this any, it's kind of small. Let's see if I can make this any bigger. First, I'm going to stretch. This is Emacs, so I don't know if I to. Apple Plus. Oh. <laughs> um, so Shift Windows Plus. Ah, awesome. OK. So this is Macaulay 2. And there is a package in Macaulay 2 which checks lots of things. It checks F reg. Remember, I had a diagram of singularities, F regular, you know, F rational, F pure, F injective. It checks all those things and a lot more. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it comes built in with Macaulay 2. This is, a, this is a, a fresh install of Macaulay 2. So I hope it works. I hope it's there. Ah, OK, it's there. Load package test ideals. Um, <clears throat> this package called test ideals actually um, actually, has a fairly long little document. Same control shift. Um, you know, describing all its functionality here. Twenty pages or so of the, of the functionality in this Macaulay two package. But I don't know. I'm going to click on it. And I, I don't want to. I'm just going to grab an example from it. Is what I'm going to do. How about we? How about we check whether something's F rational? I'll tell you where um, this has F purity. Here's F rational. Here's one. Okay. Actually, I already copied this over, so I'll just I'll cheat. Okay, so actually, it was um, a question for a while in characteristic p on the characteristic p side whether there was an example of a ring A such that A mod F was F regular, so that's like the log terminal singularity, and if that implied whether A itself was F regular, and this was an open question. And I think Anurag Singh showed this was not true in the characteristic P side first. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give you his example right here. So um, S is this big old ring right here. It's defined by that ideal. And I guess it's five variables. Okay. So um, <clears throat> what? It turns out that if you, mod, if you mod out by an appropriate element in here, this ring is F regular. Okay. And he actually gave families of these. If I change these M's and N's, I can get lots more examples, and I can change the characteristic too. Um, but I get lots more examples. I mean, it's some kind of, honestly, it's a minors of some matrix. If you, all right. But it's some kind of ideal here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type, is F rational? Um, S mod I. I is that ideal right there. And let's see how fast this computer is. OK, it's giving me a warning. It's fine. It is true. It is F rational, and that's what it's supposed to be. And it's not a, that's not a trivial example. This is not a Gorenstein, not a hypersurface example at all. Um, and I can make it a lot more complicated. And it actually ran pretty fast. I was, that's, 
Not bad. Macaulay 2 is getting faster. OK, um, so you, know, you can also do the same kind of argument if you want to show something's KLT. You have to do an additional hypothesis that in the characteristic, you check whether it's um, F regular. You have to show that P, assume that P does not divide the index of KX. But if you make that assumption that P does not divide the index, this sort of lifting argument works there too. So you can prove things are KLT and characteristic zero. Um, we don't know how to use this. We haven't proved log canonical inversion of a junction yet from characteristic P to mixed characteristic. I don't know, Joe. Joe, do you have any? We've talked about this before. OK. <laughs> um, so we haven't done that yet. I hope we will do it. I, mean, I think Janos talked about log canonical inversion of a junction, this Kawakita result a little bit during one of his talks. OK, but anyways, I, I did just want to mostly advertise this test ideal package. And you can actually use it, even if you don't care about characteristic P at all, to prove things have rational or KLT singularities. OK, thank you very much for your time. No, I, I, I don't know if it's, no, I doubt it. This guy is not Q, this guy is not Q Gorenstein. No, so it's going to be hard to actually check things about it, um, to work with it. And that's sort of the point. If it was Q, yeah. Anyways. But it's, I, I, I think you have to have a non-Q Gorenstein example, but, well, no, you do have to have a non-Q Gorenstein example because otherwise inversion of a junction is fine. But um, somehow, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't look that complicated to me if I'm going to write down a non-Q Gorenstein ring. I probably can't do a lot simpler than that, frankly. Yeah. No, I mean. Actually, if you think back to Hara's theorem, that, all, that almost is a Bertini-type theorem, right? If I have something that's rational and characteristic zero, then when I go mod p for most p, it's f-rational. So you can even think of this as some kind of deformation statement. So if I have one fiber that's, I mean, so, so in fact, if I have one fiber that's f-rational, then in characteristic zero, I know I'm rational. That's just the argument I just gave. And then Hara tells me that most fibers are rational anyways. So you have that kind of deformation statement. But I don't think, I mean, I, as far as I know, I don't have a Bertini's type statement. Actually, we don't even have a Bertini type statement for f rational. That, that's an open question. F injective is false. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I don't have anything useful to say, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah? So, just when you said that the inverse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, 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 so I said pseudo rational does not imply f rational. That. Yes. No, so, 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 for, okay. So in, in characteristic 2, 3, 5, that's, that's the only place you can find surface singularity examples. For, for surface singularity, for Gorenstein surface singularities, these notions are the same. Um, pseudo rational, F rational, those notions are the same. And actually, also for characteristic P, Gorenstein, double points, BCM rational, and classic, you know, and pseudo-rational, classical rational, those are also the same for the surface Gorenstein singularities, residual characteristic bigger than five. But even for surface singularities, mixed characteristic, you have the same problem you have there. I mean, I, I, I can write some down if you want. I don't know if it's helpful or not. I mean, you know, then we could check whether they're rational or not using the computer. Um, um, well, yeah, I, 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 I actually would be happy to do that. But uh, yeah, so, and actually, that, that kind of issue is really what, um, you know, sort of bad behavior of singularities is really what makes the MMP in characteristic P work um, in characteristic bigger than five. 
So it, it's all sort of connected here in some subtle sense. Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely can. Um, the one thing you have to assume is that the uh, Cartier index of the canonical guy on your mixed characteristic thing, if you're going mod p, is not divisible by p. So if you, at least our proof needs that. I haven't thought about that. I don't, I kind of doubt it, but it, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Well, we have a lot more questions to call at the reception as well, so maybe you could thank Carl now and 